we call your attention to the book of Ephesians. I did mention this morning, I should have said it earlier, but I do thank the Lord um, uh, because this resurrection day for sunrise service and then regular service uh, of 1975 was the first day I came on this campus to serve, so it's been 49 years today. And um, I thank God for that. Amen. My, my grandma, daddy, mama used to like to sing an old spiritual that says, sit down, sir. Sit down and rest a little while. <laughs> I know you're tired. <laughs> Amen. So we're trying to coast on to that place. <laughs> Amen. By the help of the Lord. So I pray daily, Lord, send the help. Whoever that is, wherever they are, you know where we are, so send the help. Thank you, Lord, for the help. Amen. Amen. We're going to, in chapter 2, we're going to begin reading at verse 4. Well, I'm a, let's start at verse 1 and get it all in. How about that? And we're going to read through verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Amen. So glad to see all, all the parents who brought your children and grandchildren and nieces and nephews out today. Amen. I am really happy. Amen. To see you. And keep on bringing them. And don't, don't, we are not distracted nor disturbed by the little noises that children make. Amen. We, we don't have a children's church quite intentionally. Children don't learn how to flow in church by being out of church. <laughs> they need to watch me and you. <laughs> so they learn how to do it. That's why we do it the way we do it. Amen. Others do it differently. I'm not criticizing anybody. I'm just saying why we do it the way we do it. Amen. Um, Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. Um, this is according to the King James Version, and we're going to try to read kind of slowly and rhythmically. Amen. May we read. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in, time, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, 
created in Christ Jesus unto good works, with God, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 6 in particular says, And hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. We're going to talk just for a few minutes about being seated in heavenly places. Being seated in heavenly places. Uh, I think it probably more fruitful and, ho and holds the, the hope of more productivity if we talk about what the resurrection ought mean to us in practical terms in everyday terms rather than simply rereading the story. Because all of us can read the story as often as we wish. Amen. Amen. Now, I know many of us don't read the story, <laughs> but we can read the story as often as we wish. Amen. Amen. I, 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 recall uh, hearing, I ne I've never seen it, but I heard that there was a, 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 a pastor in a large city who um, every Easter would, would preach uh, from a casket until he got to the point where Jesus got up and then he'd get up out the casket. Well, I'm not prone to... <laughs> those kinds of illustrations and the only time I want to be in a casket is when I don't know I'm in the casket. <laughs> so I ain't going to do that. Now y'all have to look up somebody else if you want that. <laughs> Amen. I know that I have a responsibility to help the people of God. Amen. To help all people of God. Amen. All people realize, and uh, I'm talking in particular, especially the community I primarily serve, must realize that we are not stepchildren, we are not accidents, we are not add-ons, amen, to the whole Bible scene, amen, that we are part and parcel of the Bible story from beginning to end. Amen. That we need not feel that, that this is something that was thrown on us by somebody else. If you really do some history studying, you'll find out that, amen, um, we were there. Amen. And we're still here. Amen. So uh, the encouragement is in it received the promise of God as your very own. Amen. Amen. I, 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 well, sometimes you can get treated a certain way so long until although that's not your inheritance, you start acting like it is. Yeah, you can, you can, you can, you can get treated poorly so long till you just expect to be treated poorly. You can do without so long till you just expect to do without. Amen. 
Amen. You can be marginalized and minimized so long until you just think it is your, your inevitable lot to be marginalized and minimized. I've got a responsibility to tell you the devil still is a liar. The promises of God are yea and amen for all his children. Glory to God. Amen. Now God doesn't have any stepchildren. Amen. He ain't got no almost children. He ain't got no bush babies. Amen. Every child of God is a child of God. And what we're learning is we've got to go back and learn again when, 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 when this whole ball was, start, was started, when the rolling of the ball was started, when mankind was placed in the Garden of Eden to have dominion. To rule. It got messed up. But God's plan was still for mankind to have dominion. Amen. Amen. Now having dominion does not mean we just get to sit under the plum tree all day every day. Having dominion means you got to take responsibility for the productivity of the land. Having dominion means you got to put in some, some, some work if you want some increase. Are, are we communicating? He, so he put us, uh, he put mankind there to have dominion, to, to be stewards over the extension of his kingdom on earth. His kingdom was already in heaven. And we are taught, thy kingdom come, thy will be done where? On, as. Are, are we communicating? So, so we're, in, we're involved in this difficult challenge of, of helping people and, and empowering people and speaking the word of God imparting into the spirits of people so that we can realize who we are in God's sight and, and carry ourselves accordingly. Are, are we communicating? I know this is kind of challenging. And the reason it's challenging is because some of us have bought into other people defining who we are. You mean we gonna listen to two little princesses give those essays they gave this morning and stand and speak forthrightly and intelligently to us and we gonna agree that those kids are supposed to be relegated to some place of mediocrity in society? Well, the devil is a liar. And we have got to tell them. We have got to push them. We've got to let them know you are royalty. You are royalty. You might not always act like right now. Y'all know royalty doesn't always act royally. But the fact that royalty doesn't always behave in royal fashion doesn't mean they're not royalty. Oh, man. Are we communicating here today? Having dominion means that, that, that the Lord then, here we are through Christ. We have this second opportunity to be put in heavenly places. Glory to God. Now we know that that, we will, that will not be fully consummated until we transition into the, out of this life into the presence of God. But in this life, we've got to know, and if we don't know, we've got to learn how we are to proceed so that we can 
uh, uh, um, actualize this being seated in heavenly places. Amen. Now this is maybe a, a, a comical kind of um, just for illustration's sake. In coming to America, <laughs> um, what was what was Eddie Murphy's character name? Prince. Akeem. When was he not Prince Akeem? He was Prince Akeem from the start to the finish. Now, he didn't always behave like Prince Akeem. He thought he had to kind of step out of his role so, to prove a point and to make, some, you know. Yeah, but he was always. Oh, man. And I've got this challenge to just remind us today. That the person sitting on both sides of you, if somebody's on both sides, or the person sitting next to you, in front of you, behind you, and even in your seat. If you are a child of the Most High God, and you walk in relationship, reconciled relationship with him through Jesus Christ, you have every right, and he expects you to be seated in heavenly places. He does not expect you to look for the easy way out. He does not expect you to look to be somebody groveling, waiting for a handout. He doesn't expect you. He doesn't expect you to be conceited. He doesn't expect you to think you're the only pebble on the beach. He doesn't expect you to think you're better than anybody. But he sure doesn't expect you to think anybody is any better, better qualified, able, or available than you are. Amen. 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 I, I, I can see through the veil on some of your faces. Because life isn't always fair. Amen. Life happens. And our pristine pictures get mud thrown on them. Let me tell you, that doesn't change the Lord's plans for your destiny. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. The day is for excuses. A long gone now. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. And I'm saying to you children, all of you who wrote those essays, you school-aged children and college-aged children, amen, you need to sit and talk with your moms and dads and your grandparents and great-grandparents and older aunties and uncles, generations down the road. Listen to them tell you about what they came through to get to where they are. Listen, listen to them tell you about how they dealt with systemic evil. And then when they get through telling you, then you come and complain to me about the little discomforts you have to deal with from time to time. Fanny Lou Hamer and the the ladies and hidden figures. Man, those, those women caught hell going and coming. But there was something on the inside telling them I am not how they treat me. I am not what they think of me. I am not what they say about me. And I need to stay focused so that I can apprehend, I can achieve, I can walk in heavenly places. I see. Oh, are we communicating? Children, are y'all understanding?
So Jesus got up and hallelujah uh, and secured it for all of us. Amen. Amen. He, he secured it for all of us so that the total person, body, soul, and spirit can walk in the newness of life. Now we have done a pretty good job of, of, of dealing with the spirit walking in the new life. But we haven't done as well in terms of getting our souls and our bodies engaged and being quickened to live, to sit in heavenly places. Let me quickly make that plain. There was some cheap, twisted theology passed out that taught us that all you need to focus on is over yonder, by and by. Now, I ain't saying that that's untrue. I am saying that's not the whole story. Are we communicating? Amen. And, and what happened, and I, now I, I commend our four parents because those folk were subjected to hellish situations that I cannot begin to imagine. Amen. All I can say is I probably wouldn't have made it too well. Amen. But the, I, that's me coming out of the context I came out of. If I was born in that context, I don't know what I would have done. But those folk could only look forward to a future. Amen. But there was something in the spirits of the people identified in those essays this morning that was telling them if God is who he said he is and if Jesus did what, what the word said he did, then there are some things we are supposed to be inhabiting and apprehending and walking in this side of Jordan. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so we've got a responsibility to cultivate all of us to sit in heavenly places, our bodies. Amen. We got to take we got to take better care of our bodies. Amen. 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 We gotta we we know we know how to work really hard. Those of us my generation. Amen. But we gotta learn how to rest. Amen. We we, we gotta amen. We gotta learn. Amen. How how to properly um, just take care of our bodies. Amen. Because as long as we live, the spirit and the soul are residents of the body. Amen. So when we are seated with Christ in heavenly places, amen, I cannot have a three meal a day diet of chocolate cake. <laughs> I need to go back and learn how my grandparents did it. Eating nuts and berries and stuff, just stuff that was growing all around them. They just walk, grab a couple of nuts, eat them, grab some berries and... Amen. So we got to replace some stuff. I ain't saying take it off the... Yeah. But it can't be for every meal. <laughs> Dessert, entree. Appetizer, chocolate cake, chocolate cake. We got to take better care of ourselves. Amen. It was easy. Listen, I'm, I'm not going to be here long, but listen. It was easy to eat a five or 6,000 calorie dinner when I've been plowing mules all day long. 
Come on, somebody. It, it, I needed, I needed the biscuits, I needed the cornbread, I needed the rice. I needed all of that just so I could go plow tomorrow. When last you plowed a mule? Hmm? <laughs> and some of these children looking at me like, well, plow, what is that? <laughs> Dig a hole. So if I, if, if, so I can't do the four or 5,000 calorie dinner <laughs> when my lifestyle is much more sed sedentary. Amen. I got to take care of this body. And do what one of my old cousins in Burton said. She said, die when you can't do no better. And I took her motto. Amen. So whenever you hear that I'm going, I just couldn't do no better. I, <laughs> I'm going to try to live as long as I can. And as best I can. Got to take care of our bodies. Are we communicating? If we're going to sit in heavenly places. Amen. What happened to the wisdom of our elders? Who knew, who knew how to cure illnesses? Not do what, 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 um, what the medical community is now. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, diagnose you at 35 and then you have you 35 or 40 years not cured but maintained because it feeds the system to make the money. I don't mind medicine if it's going to cure me. I don't need medicine to help me stay sick. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm, I ain't talking about your doctors. I got one too. But I don't just receive as blanket what I need to do, whatever my doctor tells me. Amen. If he says something that I don't, that doesn't settle in my spirit. We talk about that. Amen. And I tell them, no, ain't no sense in writing me no prescription. I'm not going to pick it up, and I'm not going to take it. We're going to try something else first. Amen. And he agrees. He said, let's, let's go on. You try that. Let's see how it is in three months. Amen. So we got to take care of our bodies. Amen. Be done with the body. I want to ask this one, this last question. Have you ever noticed um, when you don't feel like doing something physically and you don't do it, you feel less like doing anything? If raising my arm that high hurts, and I said, I ain't going to raise it that high, after a while, I ain't going to be able to raise it that high. After a while, I'm going to be like tied up in a knot. Then um, uh, the, 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 the sitting and seated in heavenly places of our souls. Amen. Now we, we get our spirits right with God. We receive Jesus. But our souls, which include our, our thinking, our decision making. Amen. Our likes and dislikes. Amen. Our emotions, our emotions are part of, part of our souls. A lot of us are burdened down in our souls. Amen. We're carrying extra weight and our, our souls are more overweight than our bodies. Because we carry stuff. Now I'm not saying stuff won't come up, but I'm saying we got to learn how to really commit things to the Lord. Amen. Amen. I watch older saints, and, and this is what I've learned. I've not learned exactly how to do it as well as they, they, they did and they do it, but I'm trying. When, when, when a crisis comes up, they will get upset for a few minutes. And then usually at some point, they'll just, <sighs> which means I got to give this thing to the Lord is more than I can handle. It doesn't mean they don't care. 
But it means they realize the enemy is trying to put me on overload. And if I get my soul bogged down with worrying about this and frantic about that and fearful of this and disgusted about that, where's my life? How do I occupy? Are we, does this sound relevant to anybody here? Y'all mighty quiet. It's hard, but we have to just decide everybody isn't going to like us. Just, just go on and accept that. Be, be, be okay with that. And, and then stop trying to figure out why they don't like you. Because you, what you're trying to figure out is what do I need to do to make them like me. You don't need to do nothing. If, if you can change your, you can, you can use ultra, you can change your head, you, you can change whatever you want. They just don't like you. That thing used to bother me, you know. I used to say, man, I ain't never done nothing to him. Why did... Now, I wish you didn't. House or never. Get that stuff off you. Trying to please everybody. When you get every human being... Well, I'd, I'd asked this years ago of the sisters, and they, they were a big help to the brothers. But I'm asking the brothers and the sisters today. Can any one human being keep you pleased 24-7? Just answer under your breath. I know some of y'all scared to answer because somebody's sitting close to you that you... <laughs> You, and even if you don't answer, I know the answer. Nobody can please any of us all the time. We can't even please ourselves all the time. So I can tell you 9 a.m., do this and I'll be happy. And by 12 noon, I don't want that no more. And you acting like a crazy because you trying to die to do what I asked for 9 o'clock. Stupid. Stop jerking people around like that. It's evil. You call yourself sanctified. It's manipulative. I thought you loved me. Yeah, I love you. I just ain't crazy. I love you. I love you. Free that soul up. So, so when, what the enemy does is he gets us so bogged down with stuff to when the critical uh, matters of life come and sound decisions need to be made, our thinking is so warped that we can't even make sound decisions because our, our, our souls have been chipped away with fears and doubt. And man, if I don't do this, they aren't going to like me. And I, don't, I don't feel like going. Really, I'm feeling kind of sick in my body, but I better go. I better show my face because they might never speak to me. But look, look, if you're feeling sick and somebody won't speak to you because you don't show up, you don't need that somebody in your life. Does this make sense? And then, of course, our spirits. The spirit man, the spirit woman has been quickened also. That part of you that is the God in you. Amen? Has been quickened. To be quickened means to be made alive. Who were dead and trespasses and sins. Can we be real about it? Where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. Every saved person walked according to the course of this world at some point. Amen. According to the prince of the power of the air, that the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, that same spirit that has people doing crazy stuff now, had us doing crazy stuff, among whom also we had our conversation in times past. You cannot sit in heavenly places and have conversations in the gutter. 
we cannot keep having conversations about the woes of everybody else and, and the falling downs of everybody else's children and, and everybody's marriage that's in trouble. That's, if you aren't praying for them and encouraging them, keep your sanctified mouth shut. Fulfilling the desire of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath. Were the children of wrath? You want to see some, some formerly mean people? Look around. <laughs> see some people who really could chew up, chew up one side of you and down the other one. You don't have to go outside. Look right around. Former, we 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 have been recycled. Hallelujah! But God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us so much that Jesus went to the cross. Hallelujah! Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened, has made us alive together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Well, I'm going to just pause right there. Um, and I'm pausing there because um, you've got to make decisions. I, I'm so glad to see everybody in worship. Um, my charge, though, isn't just to see you in worship, but to see the church in you. Amen. 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 And in order for that to happen, y'all, our whole beings have to come forward. Our whole beings. You can't leave your body behind you can't leave your soul behind you can't leave your spirit behind our whole beings have to be seated in heavenly places amen our whole beings our whole beings so i've got to ask if we if each of us were assessed Today, how would our assessment look? Is my body and my mind, and, and is my mind and is my spirit, are they all seated in heavenly places? And if any part of me is not where it ought to be, then I need to ask the Lord, help me. Help me, Lord, strengthen me where I'm weak. Build me up where I'm torn down. Where things are too much for me, Lord, give me strength. Send me help, Lord, and then have me to have sense enough to know the help you've sent and to be willing to listen to him. Amen. And let me speak to that unteachable spirit that wants to take root among the saints. Any, me or anybody else in here. If I get to the point where the Lord can teach me nothing, I am of no value to him. And you, as part of the body of Christ, when you get to the point where the Lord can tell you nothing, what good are you to the body? If it's your way or the highway, what good are you to the body? You are a stumbling block. I know this is kind of pointed. But we got to do more than just look good on what we call Easter. All right. All right. This is more than eggs in a basket and a new outfit. Right. This is truly about realizing what it means when Christ got up out of that grave and, and became the bridge by which we could get back to God the Father. Amen. And he could work again to reestablish his kingdom on earth as he originally planned. Uh, when I 
was little, I used to kind of hear them do different renditions of this, but um, so we're not going to do it straight hymn style, no, but it's kind of, that's flow. I'm pressing on the upward way New heights I'm gaining every day Still praying as I onward bound Lord, plant my feet on high. Yeah. I love verse 2. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my aim is high. Yeah. I want to live above the world, heavenly places, though Satan's darts at me are hurled for faith has caught the joyful sound the song of saints on higher ground i want to scale the utmost highs heavenly places and catch a gleam of glory bright but still I'll pray till heaven I found Lord lead me on to higher ground Lord lift me up and I shall stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on high. So you hear the song is a prayer. The song is a prayer. And, and, and the request is, plant my feet on higher ground. I don't want to stay down here where things are meaningless, where things are pointless. I don't want to stay here where life has no agenda. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. This is for every saint, no matter what age you are. Perhaps most of your work life is past, but you have a, you have a, a wealth of wisdom that younger people need. We've got to make ourselves available to speak life to them. Then younger people, you have a wealth of energy, but you need the wisdom of the elders to tell you how to navigate life. I know you got the strength. You can go chop down trees with a single chop. Amen. But I'm telling you, if you listen to the elders, you'll, make, you'll get much farther, much faster. So we need one another. It is individual, but it is corporate. Now, are there any among us who are not walking, are not living in reconciled relationship with God our Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ? I extend an inv invitation for you to stand, uh, choir stand, and, and extend an invitation for you to come. Uh, I, I don't offer anything but Jesus. He is the answer. He is the answer. If you want to be seated in heavenly places and take full advantage of it, you've got to have Jesus as Lord of your life. Amen. 
are we communicating in here? Glory to God. You've got to know him as your Lord and Savior. I'm not offering you a, a, a particular ethnicity of Jesus. Amen. I am certainly not offering you a blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus. Amen. I'm offering you the spirit of Christ who came and occupied a person in, in the Middle East. Amen. For 30 years. That's who I'm offering you. But he came to die so that anybody who believes in him can have reconciled relationship with Almighty God. For all people from, from everywhere for all time. This is the truth, you see. There is no black truth, white truth, northern truth, southern truth. There's just truth. Now, there are facts that are relevant about different groups from different locales, but the truth of God is for all people for all times. Doesn't matter who we are, doesn't matter where we hail, from where we hail. All that matters is do we hear God and believe that he has the plan for abundant life for all mankind. If you know today is your day to grab a hold of that plan, and come on, no, no judgment. I Please, a couple altar workers, a couple men and a couple women, just please make your way to the, to the floor. Amen. They're coming to, to receive you uh, when you come. They're coming at the ready, not to judge you. They don't have a quiz for you to take. Amen. All they have is Jesus. And all they want to do is show you the Bible way to enter relationship with God through Jesus Christ. You're going to need him. Not just for heaven. You're going to need him on this side. And, and we have been quickened and made alive. We have been quickened and made alive. Will you please come? Sons, daughters, grandsons, granddaughters, brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, please come. 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 If you were in reconciled relationship with God through Jesus Christ and you've just been ignoring the relationship, you never quit being Prince Akeem. You were always who you were in Christ. You just need to come back and start behaving like who you are. No judgment, no condemnation. I know the Spirit of God is saying to some of us today, all right, I need to just go and make it right now. I've been, I've been betwixt and between long enough. I've been indefinite long enough. Look like the, the enemy is trying to pull out certain pegs to watch my life crumble. And, and you can stop all of that by making yourself available to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You can stop all of that. Glory to God. I'm not saying the enemy won't come against you. But I am saying that when he comes against you, you can stabilize that. You can stop that. Glory to God. You can stop that. Bless God. Amen for the baby who's come today. Come on. Mom, you want to be that mom that the Lord consecrated you to be? Dad, you want to be that dad that God purposed you to be? You want the benefits. I know you want a good life. But you can't have a good life according to your terms. It's got to be God's terms. And, 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 he, and he, this, this scripture says, he has quickened us. He's already quickened us. And made us to sit in heavenly places. We are fighting. He's trying to bless us. And we're fighting it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Will you come today? Just step out, step out, step out. Everybody who matters will celebrate your decision. And people who have questions about the decision really don't matter right now. Will you come? Well, last part of his invitation is this. Uh, yeah, come on, son. Anybody um, 
you know, you've grown and you've been flowing in your own little zone for a minute. And uh, you may know that the Lord wants you to come, but um, you're just feeling a little self-conscious about coming up here in front of people. Why I got to do that? Let me tell you something. The word of God says if, if you are ashamed of him in front of these little, who, who in here is so important you need to be ashamed? Of Man, he said, Jesus said, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. So if, if there's something you need to just straighten out, to get settled in your spirit, then please come on today. Come on, let's get it done. Come on. I know some of you need to come. Amen. I'm, I'm imploring. I'm begging. I'm, I'm, I know I, can, I could walk to your seat and grab your hand, but I, I would dare not do that. Amen. Because <laughs> y'all young, y'all, y'all. Y'all, y'all react kind of crazy sometimes, y'all. I don't want nobody swinging on me. Amen. We got sons and daughters. We got children, y'all. And let me, I mean, let me say to you young parents, when, when you start having children, life can no longer be just about you. We've got too many selfish people raising children. It's just got to be, you got to be happy. Baby, when you have children, you just want the Lord to give you the strength to take care of your children. You, you figure you'll get happy somewhere down the line. You, you all right just making sure they're all right. So I'm, I'm, I'm just confronting that spirit that has some of y'all, amen, stuck on stupid. You know you need to provide better leadership for your children. Better leadership is more than the grits and the rice and the gravy and the beans and the peas. That, that's part of, that's pro providing. But they need to see sound leadership. They need to see soundness in you. They need to see sound spiritual leadership. They need to see sound spiritual leadership. This is, amen. It's invitation time now. Invitation time. Invitation time. Invitation time. No distractions. Anybody need to come? I just want to be the best I can be. I want to cover my ground as best I can. I know I won't do it flawlessly, but I want to be the best I can be. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I appreciate all of you who've come, who felt a need to come, have a had a desire to come. If you've given your life to Christ, you are seated in heavenly places. Please, we've got to, you don't have to live below your, your blessing potential. You're seated in heavenly places. But if you want to access the word, the more you give, you submit to his lordship, the more revelation you have. The more he'll speak to you, the more he'll tell you about using godly wisdom. I'm telling you. But you got to submit to his lordship. He can't be your lord at 10 to 12 on Sunday and then you do what you want to do the rest of the week. He is your Lord all the time or none of the time. That's why when he's your Lord all the time and we do something that's wrong as we do things that are wrong, we immediately feel the conviction of the Lord. And he draws us back to himself. <clears throat> Amen. 
Any for baptism today? All right. All right. Bless the Lord, young daughter Jenkins will be baptized next Sunday, the Lord willing. Any others for baptism? Anybody? Christian experience, which means you're simply saying, I did in fact give my life to Christ. And, uh, and based on my, the reality of my encounter with him, um, by testimony of that, I present myself to become part of this, this fellowship. Or you're part of a fellowship where, um, where uh, they will give you a letter dismissing you from them and, rec and commending you to us. Uh, if any of those are your situations, then come. For the rest of us who want to just really get a better handle on this being seated in heavenly places, I'm so excited for you today. And I must tell, I must say while I'm, while I'm excited for you getting a handle on doing it God's style, I'm equally, equally grieved for the people who are, are sitting here who need to get it right and who are, are allowing the enemy to harden their hearts. I'm, I'm just grieved. I'm grieved. I am grieved. I'm grieved. He's laid the foundation. He's opened up the way. So what's this coming to church thing for? Is it just form and fashion? It's just what you do with Sunday morning. Two on Christian experience. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. And the altar workers will, will take you and, and share more with you and get the pertinent information, contact information and those sorts of things. Amen. What I'm going to do though now, I know she's being baptized next Sunday. But I'm going to try to follow my mind and shake y'all's hand today. Because <laughs> I don't know what might happen between now and next Sunday. <laughs> so you, you see, you're saved when you make the decision. The baptism ain't going to save you. Your confession of Jesus and receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's what saves you. And that's being taken care of today. Amen. So come on, baby, shake my hand. Bless you, honey. God bless you. Rededicating. Amen. Welcome home, Nisa. My birthday partner. Not birth date, just birthday. <laughs> Christian experience. Amen. Let me shake y'all's hands right now. Amen. Welcome. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. express um, uh, really uh, my, my greatest respect for all parents. Uh, parenting is a challenging office, a challenging task. I just challenge you though, more than anything else, let, let your children, give your children a, a legacy of knowing who the Lord is. That's the greatest thing that they can inherit from you, knowing who the Lord is. Amen. All the other things, the houses, the land, the money, the bank accounts, those things are nice, but they're not necessary. And everybody isn't going to have the same amount of that. But we all can give them equally that heritage if we, cho if we make that choice. God bless you. I'm going to go in and pray. And I must tell you, I'm praying not under duress, but I'm praying because I'm worried about y'all, especially y'all young parents. Amen. Y'all hear those babies? 
They're crying for they're crying for somebody familiar. They're crying for a familiar hand. Amen. And and the hand needs Jesus to lead you. Your your children deserve that. Amen. They deserve that. And you have a blessed opportunity. You got one window of opportunity. You can't re-raise them once they're grown. You can't fly into their lives when they get 18 and, you know, I'm your daddy, I'm your mama, and then want to claim them then. No, you got to ride the waves. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come, Lord, and we thank you so much. We thank you for this, for this young lady who's, young sister Jenkins, who's, who's um, given her life to you today. Thank you today, Lord. Uh, thank you for her making a conscious decision to make Jesus her choice. Thank you this man and this woman who uh, come of their own volition by Christian experience. We thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you, Lord, that it doth not yet appear how we shall be, and that we're all engaged in this process of, of, um, of, uh, of improving over time. So, Lord, I just pray today. I pray, Lord, that you would meet all who have embraced this message. I pray that you would meet all who have embraced this message, this, this being seated in heavenly places, in our bodies, in our souls, and in our spirits. I pray that you would meet them exactly where they are, that you will help them and that you will empower them, that you will instruct them, that you will teach them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we come in no strength of our own. We certainly come with no personal measure of perfection. All that's good about us belongs to you. Everything that's right about us belongs to you. We thank you for that, God. We thank you for teaching us to, to identify the gifts you put in us. And then for laboring to mature these gifts so that they may be used for your glory. Oh, Father, we thank you today. We thank you for helping us realize the, the inheritance and the heritage of the saints. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to realize that you did not purpose us to simply exhale and inhale in this life with only a view of the afterlife. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Christ forgave us and cleansed us and made us to sit in heavenly places. Lord, I pray now a covering over our families, over family units, God. Family units are under attack. Young families are under attack. Uh, families that have been together 10 to 15 years are under attack. Families that have been together 20 to 30 years are under attack. But God, we pray a seal over our families today in the name of Jesus that the enemy may not be able to come in and steal, may not be able to come in and divide, may not be able to come and, and tear us asunder in the name of Jesus. Oh God, oh God, oh God. We thank you today. Oh, we thank you today, God. God, I pray for those who should, have, should be at this altar but did not come. I pray you extend your mercies toward them, Lord. I pray that you continue to hold back the storms that the enemy has sent to bring devastation to them. I pray that you will still the storms and give them the opportunity again to make up their minds, God. In the name of Jesus. God, I pray for children who are looking for sound parents to guide them. I pray for parents who are trying to raise children in a world where children are taught to not obey parents. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray. I pray, Lord, 
I pray for our elders, Lord, many of whom are just suffering from pure old loneliness because very few of the people they have blessed and helped take the time to turn back and say thank you. Very few people uh, take the time to stop by uh, unless there's something they want from them. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh, bless the elders, Lord. May they feel your love, Lord. And in, in the midst of the loneliness, in the midst of them thinking about uh, all those who should be contacting them, may they celebrate the fact that they're safe in your arms. Oh, God, we thank you for them. Thank you for their witness down through the years. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Oh, God, I pray for the younger people that they would realize that, that moms, dads, and grandparents and great-grandparents aren't going to text and aren't going to necessarily do all the electronic things, but they want to hear their voices. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us to realize uh, it's, it's almost an insult to our parents that we not have time for them while they're living but we take off days and buy new outfits to go to funerals to somebody that we have not spoken with for months and months. Help us, Lord, to make these things right, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. We can't do it on our own. We need strength that comes solely from you. Lord, we thank you for the new names written down in glory today, even those who may be joining us virtually. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for those who rededicate themselves today in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for the persons who've come to be part of, become part of this fellowship. Oh, God, all the honor and the glory belongs to you. And we believe that decisions today will have us this afternoon seated in heavenly places, enjoying the benefits of life in Christ and the hope of eternal life in Christ. Thank you now for hearing and answering this prayer. We believe it is heard and we believe it is answered. God, I pray, I, I, feel, I feel prodded to pray for the person whose mind is under attack. I pray for the person whose peace is under attack. I pray for the person who has a wonderful cosmetic veneer, but beneath that outer shell, they're just shattered, God. Oh, stabilize them right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Cause them to know not, not a tear falls, but that you know about it all together. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you today. You know it all. Some know a little bit and some know none at all, but you know it all, God, in the name of Jesus. Encourage that heart today, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for our, our aged, aging mothers and fathers who've been so faithful down through the years. Thank you, Lord, for them being such giving people in the name of Jesus. Thank you for them being folk who just worked hard and did so much for everybody else. Lord, we pray that these golden years may be their very best years and we pray that we may do all we can to make them so in Jesus' name. We thank you for the cries of the children heard in this sanctuary today. That is encouragement for the future, God. And we pray that they'll continue to be brought to the house of prayer where they may learn your will and your way, your word, God. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. Amen and amen.